Hey folks and welcome back. In this scene we're going to take a look at setting up our projection camera and then we're going to try and do a very rough lineup. Okay so to start off with I'm going to create a projection camera. I'm here in the perspective view and I'm going to hold Control, Shift and C. That will copy my perspective camera. I'm now in Persp1. I'm going to rename this. I'm going to call it House Projection Cam. Now I need to set up this camera so it is projecting out the house texture. Whenever we're doing anything with textures in Maya, we will end up using shaders. So I'm going to go and put a shader onto my house now. And I'm going to use an Arnold's surface shader. So on the Arnold's surface shader, the attribute that I need to put my texture into is color. So I'm going to click on the little black and white checker over here. And normally what you would do if you had UVs on this model is you would click on file you would click the left mouse button on file in this case that's not what i want to do i want to project a texture onto this model so i'm going to right click create as projection that creates this projection node now on the projection node i need to point it to my camera that i created so i need to change the projection type from planner over to perspective and I need to go and pick the camera that I want to project through. And that is house projection cam. Then I need to go and load up my house texture. Now I have rather a lot of textures in here and that's because I have worked through these files already. But my house texture is just here. And now we can see the house texture being projected through this house projection camera onto the model. As I move my camera around now, I can see that the house projection is moving around as well. So I need to try and move my 3D camera in Maya to be in the same position as the camera was in the real world. And that is called camera lineup. And primarily, camera lineup is a job that a match mover is concerned with in a vfx pipeline and often they will use match moving software to try and achieve this but match moving software works on comparing one frame to another frame and in this case we have just a still camera so we're going to have to line it up by eye Lining up by eye can take a little bit of practice and where we can we want to try and make it as easy on ourselves as possible. And the way to make it easier on ourselves is to note down some things when we're taking some photographs. Ideally we would note down things like the distance from our camera to the edge maybe of the object here. Uh, we would write down the height of the camera from the ground. We could take a photograph of the camera if we had a second camera that's referred to as a witness camera, uh, to get an idea of the, uh, to get an idea of the orientation of the camera. But we can still match up by eye without any of those things. Probably the most useful thing to note down if you have it is the focal length of the camera. And I did happen to note the focal length of the camera when I was taking these photographs. It was 24 millimeters. So with that entered here, I'm gonna lock that. I don't want that number to change for now. So I'm gonna lock that attribute. Uh, and really the process of getting the camera to line up is sort of a process of elimination. So I'm not going to go through the whole process because it does take a little bit of time, but I am going to show you one or two tips to make your life just a little bit easier. Uh, so we can roughly line up by eye and you can see that what tends to happen is that you get one part of it lining up just the way you want. And then, so for example, the back section here, and then you find that the front section is out. So you then try to rotate around to the front section and you knock the back section out. And this can become a little bit frustrating, uh, particularly if there's a lot of depth in the shot. What we can try and do to make our lives just a little bit easier is we can line up to just one face of this house to start off with. And again, this can take a little bit of work, but something maybe like this. Now you can see in this particular shot, I'm quite far away from the house. The house is kind of small in frame. 
So to get a better idea of how close or how far away I am from lining this up, I can use something called pan and zoom, which is this little button here. Now, you're probably better off using the hotkey, and the hotkey is the backslash key. When I hold that, and I can now middle mouse around, and the minute I do that, I'm holding the button down, and you can see it says 2D pan and zoom just here. So if I right mouse button, I can now zoom in. Now that is not moving the camera, and it is not changing the focal length. It is essentially like a digital zoom. It's a little bit of a trick, and it allows us to zoom in here. And I can see that actually I'm not anywhere near as close as I thought I was. Now I can start to move around the camera again now. I've let go of the backslash key and I've gone over to the old key. And I can try and start to move it around now. And I can see that that there is maybe a little bit closer in terms of this line along here. Now at this initial stage, I do not want to be moving the camera and moving the model. Just move the camera. In fact, the model has not moved from the origin. It was modeled around the origin and it's still there. So that's not too bad on that front face. So what I want to try and do is rotate the camera without losing this front face here. And the way to do that is to take the pivot point, which is currently in the center of the camera, and to snap the pivot point onto one of the verts along this face that's matched up. So then we will be rotating the camera around the pivot point, which is on the corner, let's say here. And that means that this section here won't move very much, but I'll be able to move around the other sections. I'm just gonna jump out into a two-way view here, just so it's easier for you to see what's actually happening. So this one over here is going to be my projection cam, and this one here can be my perspective view. And I will just hide the attribute editor as well, just to make that a little bit bigger. So currently the pivot point for my camera is in the center of my camera. So the camera rotates around that point. Now what I'd prefer to have happen in this case is to move the pivot point from the camera so that it is sitting on this corner here. And that means that when I rotate, I will rotate around that point, meaning that the texture here won't move very much. So I can do that from within the camera by selecting the camera here or selecting it in the outliner, hitting W, that will put me on the move tool. Now I wanna move the pivot so I can hit the D key and I can hold the V key. And if I was in the perspective view, I could hold the V key and I could just left click and I could drag it over to here. Now I'm gonna do it through the camera view because it's quite a handy trick to be able to do. So I'm gonna hold the V key down and I can't left click and drag it over to here in this view because I can't actually see the camera. I'm currently in it. So what I can do instead is hold the middle mouse button and just kind of jiggle it a little bit over this point and it will jump to where I am pressing the middle mouse button. So that has snapped the pivot and I've done it from within the camera rather than having to jump out and do it in the perspective view and then jump back in. Now I'm gonna go back to my single view here. I'm gonna jump back into my camera. I can do that through the panel perspective here or I can middle mouse drag my projection cam into the viewport and now my camera is going to rotate around this pivot point so I'm going to hit E for rotate and that brings me out of the pivot point tool and now I can start rotating now I could try rotating using the gizmo in the viewport but my pivot point is now far away so the smallest movement here is going to move the camera quite quickly so what I need to do instead is go to the projection cam transform node here and I'm gonna move very, very slowly using the attribute editor. So I can hold down the control key or the command key on a Mac and I can just left click and start dragging and that is now starting to move rotate X and then I can move rotate Y and rotate Z and I want to do them one by one until I get a tighter lineup. And in this case, it looks like I need to try rotate Z just a little bit and you can see it's not moving down here very much, but it is moving over here quite a lot. And that's exactly what I want. And again, this can take a little bit of time, but I'm using this process of elimination to try and tighten in this front face and pull in these other faces and get them a little bit tighter as well. It may happen that I need to move left or right or up and down. And when I do that, my pivot tends to drift a little bit, 
off of the point so i might need to move it around i could also i might need to snap it down to another part of the model once this bit gets locked in etc right so this can take a little bit of time to line up but i've got a much better chance of lining up using pan and zoom and using this trick and working through my axis one by one and trying to tighten it up as much as i can now it does take a little bit of time and practice i had to try and lock in this way but stick at it as long as you can once you have it as tight as you think you can get it but then and only then you could very very gently tweak some of these verts to get them to line up now we only want to do that at the very end when we feel that the camera is when we feel like we've exhausted all possibilities with our projection camera i'm going to take a few minutes to try and line it up a little bit tighter and we'll come back and recap this lesson i spent a few minutes lining up the camera as tight as i could and once I had the camera lined up quite tight, I did tweak one or two verts. I moved one or two little verts over here and some just here. But really, I haven't fundamentally changed the model uh, too much from the image plans. So that was a look at doing camera lineup. It is a little bit tricky. It's probably one of the trickier parts of doing camera projection. It's a foundational skill for match moving. And keep in mind, it doesn't have to be technically perfect. It just needs to look as good as it possibly can from the projection camera's point of view. So in this particular lesson, we touched on some tricks and tips for lining up our camera. We created a camera at the start using Shift, Control and C to copy our perspective view. Uh, we locked any of the attributes that we could. In this case, we had the focal length of the camera. Using this process of elimination, we were trying to lock in the overall 3D camera position to match our real world camera. We created a basic projection shader uh, out of which we projected our house texture. We did a rough lineup. Then we did the little pivot trick where we snap our pivot onto the face that we've got lined up. And we rotated slowly using the control or command and left mouse button on the attribute editor to very, very slowly move our camera around to try and lock in the final few faces. Now we've got a very basic projection set up here. In the next scene, we will take a look at refining our projection shader so that it will work better when we go to render it in Arnold.